Good afternoon, Senators. The uh, Committee in the Hall is now called back to order on Bill Number 204, that's 34 COR. In the hall, hallway is uh, Speaker Cruz, Senator Sir Nicholas, Senator Will Castro, and I, we will wait until the arrival of four additional senators and then proceed with the discussion. I want to ensure that there's at least a minute when we start the discussion that there's a quorum. Thank you, Senators. A few minutes recess.
Good afternoon, Senators. The Committee in the Hall is now reconvened. Uh, just to identify the uh, Senators who are here, we have Senator Sir Nicholas, Speaker Cruz, Senator Tom Adda, Senator Talena Nelson, Senator Will Castro, Senator Luis Munya, and Senator James Espar Don. Senators, we concluded our conversation on Section 3. We are now on Section 4. And just for the information of the body, some things were uh, changed around in terms of the verbiage and the presentation. The highlight there on sub item A is incorporated in Guam Department of Education, which is the soliciting agency. Sub item 2 regarding the evaluation committee, the composition, one of the senators previously mentioned, the composition is almost the same with a different chairperson and its wording was just switched around. And then sub item three, the committee shall, and it highlights some of the responsibilities. And upon the completion of the committee's evaluation, the superintendent shall issue <coughs> the award. Also sub item four, GDOE shall be authorized to solicit one or more entities to perform any or all of the following related activities. Architectural and engineering design, development of a comprehensive capital improvement plan, construction management, purchase of collateral equipment, and long-term capital maintenance planning. Sub item B, and uh, this is where uh, we receive guidance from a representative from the Guam Economic Development Authority in terms of applying payment, the use of the terminology payment rather than rate. Sub item C, the language was inserted uh, for the renovation and construction of a new Simon Sanchez High School on the existing site which may include demolition of such portions of the existing facility as necessary within 45 days of the completion of the uh, a &E. So, and the co of completion of the architecture and engineering design for the new Simon Sanchez High School. So that language, like I said, uh, was moved around in terms of the overall presentation with the exception of the completion of the architecture and engineering design, and Mr. Fernandez did discuss that particular component a little earlier about his desire to split uh, the consideration in regards to that. Okay, on section four, any questions, comments, or concerns? Speaker Cruz, you recognize. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I just want to, to state for the record that I have grave grave reservations about striking this section. We've received testimony about what would happen in the event that this is struck. I understand that it was the determination in your discussions with the superintendent that you want this struck. I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker, you're alluding to page four, section four? Just section so four on, on, on page six. On page six. I thought that's what we were discussing, section four. Okay. No, I just want to make sure that everyone understands. It's the page, section four is inclusive of pages four, five, and the section that you were alluding to, section six. You may proceed, Speaker Cruz. Well, I'll, I'll wait until we get to that. I thought you had gone through section, the renumbered four, when listing all of the things that are going to be done, soliciting and, and um, talking about the renovation at Simon Sanchez and Sia. I thought that's what you were talking about, so I thought that we were on page six at this point. Okay, then we will move pages by pages after we uh, entertain Senator Tom Adda. you recognize on section four, page four through six. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, I, I just want to make it clear that although I wasn't here physically this morning, I was monitoring the discussions uh, from my office this morning. And uh, first of all, going to uh, paragraph A, I, I think that is a movement forward uh, to give, to, to basically be able to break up the process uh, allowing DOE to contract for design services, for the construction management, for financing, uh, and for the construction part of it. 
uh, I think that's very important. Um, and if in fact, I, in fact, I, I did hear uh, the superintendents uh, uh, thinking out loud that they want to hire basically for the design services so that we can very clearly define what it is that Simon Sanchez is going to look like, what it is that the contractor we're gonna, is going to be expected to, to deliver. And, um, and by having that done uh, first, I mean, that's, that's certainly one way to do it, uh, then we know what we're getting into. Right now, we're kind of like, you know, uh, really kind of guessing. Uh, and, you in, and the superintendent indicated that uh, you were to hire those services, you want to be able to utilize the funds that so theoretically have been, been set aside over the years uh, that was supposed to be used for the payback, the lease back payments of the school. And so I, first I have a question to the superintendent. When was the last time you checked that account to see if there's actually money in there? Is there actually cash in there, or is it all just IOUs? Thank you, Senator. Mr. Fernandez? So um, what the bill does is provide the authority. Now, obviously, whether or not there is cash in that account or whether there are other uh, sources of funding for this purpose, um, that we, are, we were hoping to get through the appropriations process to solidify what is available through, this, through these funds. Uh, because we understand that early on there may not have been funds accumulating in this account, but that we're hopefully getting towards the thresh meeting the threshold under the uh, funds that are being collected to be able to fund this account. However, you know, they, I think the, uh, the idea behind the legislation was give us the authority, uh, give us flexibility to use any funds that are collected in this account that's set aside for lease back until we pledge it for the lease. But I'm really hoping that through the authority provided, uh, you know, through, the, through the discussion on our appropriations level in, for 2019, or through the anticipated revenues that may come in from the revenue solutions that have been identified to support the facility uh, uh, improvements for G GDOE, we may be able to identify and pull together the necessary funds. So there's no language in Bill 204 that basically says the funds that have been set aside under the Makahat bill or whatever uh, may be used uh, by the superintendent for the purpose of uh, hiring engineering services. Is there? I, I, uh, under I, section yes. five, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, um, okay, go ahead. And under section five, there is uh, additional language Page to six. authorize the use of those funds uh, for the activities that are set forth in section okay. four. All right, got it, good. Um, I, I would just, um, I would like to uh, make the suggestion that maybe in that paragraph A, in addition to design, construction management, financing, and all that, that we also add the authorization for the superintendent to hire an owner's agent engineer. Now, that could be a firm that basically is hired and they would be responsible for developing the request for proposal for the engineering services that would provide the design uh, for this construction. And at the same time, that owner's agent engineer uh, will also develop the invitation for bid documents, which according to this bill says that once the design is finished, we got 45 days to turn around and issue the solicitation for construction. Right. Well, and then that same owner's agent engineer should have the technical expertise to be able to take a look at the design and say, okay, yes, this building will stand up, uh, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so he has the technical expertise. And so we, we probably, I would, I would suggest, um, not, not just yet, uh, that we add that in there to allow to authorize the, the contracting for, an, for the services of an owner's agent engineer, okay? And so basically, you know, it's really a, a technical services available to you. I, I also want to, um, I also want to point out as a general comment that the past 
attempts that did not succeed to get a contract in place was not because we had flawed legislation. It was because the implementation of the legislation was not done properly. So for example, the first time that a, that a solicitation was put out, it was protested because when some of the bidders asked for information, we couldn't, they couldn't produce records because nobody was keeping records as required by the procurement law. The second time that it, that it got protested was because, again, the, the law clearly said that you will solicit first for the construction of the school, but you will not include in that solicitation for the repair and maintenance of the other 30 schools. But it was done that way, got protested, crashed and burned. Then we had Bill 58, which basically, well, there was actually two iterations. One tried to say um, uh, invitation for bid is the way to go. It got, it, it got vetoed, it got overridden eventually. Even DOE protest, uh, testified against that. But eventually an invitation for bid was issued. That too got protested. But it wasn't because of an in, an, a flaw in the law. It was because when the solicitation went out, the solicitation clearly said that um, well, one of, the, one of the protest items was the invitation for bid failed to include all applicable contractual terms and conditions. So procurement law requires that when you put out an invitation for bid, you attach to it all the contract documents that that contractor is going to have to live by. And when, so during that period, when offerers uh, have an opportunity to uh, request for clarification, one of the, inf one of the inquiries was um, um, in the instruction to bidders, contract documents uh, in the I invitation to bid included in the list of contract documents are the lease agreement, the maintenance agreement, the ground lease, project development agreement. None of these documents were provided in the invitation to bid. There is no detailed discussion of these agreements in the invitation to bid. Please provide drafts of the lease agreement. The government came back and said, there's no draft, none available at this time. And instead of the government coming back and saying, we'll get it to you in 30 days, they decided to uh, cancel the what do they do? Uh, you know, and then finally, we are where we are today in a stay. So I just want to, um, I just want to, to bring across the fact that there is that common thread over these years. It wasn't because of a flawed piece of legislation. It was because we did not implement it correctly. So I hope that when it goes to DOE, at least the administrative part of it, you know, we make a checklist. You know, did we, do we have a recording made of every meeting? Do we include every document? And all that stuff. So uh, it's important that we remember that. So now I will make the motion that, oh, are we ready for motions for amendments? Yes, you may proceed, Senator Adda. So I would just then on line five, uh, add before the word design, to also um, basically in compliance with the Guam procurement law for the, um, for the services of an owner's agent engineer. I don't know, maybe we need to define owner's agent engineer, but basically that's a, an engineer or a firm that's hired by the organization to do all the things that I pointed out earlier. To, to, to do the documenta RFP documentation for design, for construction management, for financing, et cetera, et cetera. But that's gonna be the one technical guy that's gonna do all this. So 
So the amendment by Senator Ada on page four is to insert after on line five after the word design comma services of an owner's agent and engineer comma construction management on that proposed amendment to page four line five. Senator Ada, I think you're, you're right. We may need the, the definition to be clarified. But Speaker Cruz, on the amendment. Thank you. I, I join in the, um, the motion. I support it wholeheartedly. Um, I really do think that we need to have someone in charge who is trained to do procurement. And in as much as I have the floor at this point, Mr. Chairman, um, you have two directors there and a third individual. Can they um, tell me which ones of them have completed the four module uh, training for, um, for uh, procurement? Thank you, Speaker Cruz. Mr. Fernandez. So um, for myself, I've completed two and will complete the third one in June. And um, I, I think I mentioned earlier when you were not in the room, our entire procurement staff, uh, well, seven of the eight buyers have completed all four modules, as well as our two uh, legal counsel, uh, our lawyers uh, in the agency. Thank you. Public works. Right now, uh, as far as I know we have uh, one person trained in all four modules, uh, Linda Bannis, and she's actually taking the lead in our procurement uh, uh, process team. Uh, the, the law currently requires that the, the directors also take it. Anybody that's going to be involved in any of the procurement and, the, and their directors. And so that's why I'm trying to figure out whether or not the superintendent and the, the deputy director of, of public works has completed the, the four modules. So you're asking if I completed the four modules? Correct. No, I have not. Have you completed any? No. Uh, actually, um, I just came into the DPW in October the 23rd. I've been, I've been there for a couple of months then. Unfortunately, I had a health issue. Uh, I had a heart attack, so I was out for another two months, so no, I haven't had the opportunity to take any of the modules. And in the entire Department of Public Works, there's only one person that's completed I, the four modules? I would have to look into that, sir. I'm pretty sure we have more, but to my knowledge right now, because I have been dealing with uh, Linda Bannis, she is the person uh, that has completed all four modules. My point, Mr. Chairman, we really need someone who not only completed the four modules, but has experience. And I think that the, that the recommendation and the amendment being proffered um, will, will do just that. Will get us someone who is not a political appointee, who, has, who does this as a living, and will make sure that the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. Because as was elucidated by the previous speaker, it was not a flawed law that resulted in the, in the um, protest. It was the implementation, and the most egregious was the last one, where they didn't even have the decency to attach the documents which they said in their IFB was attached. Thank you very much, Speaker Cruz. Senator St. Nicholas, on the proposed amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So the, the amendment is to um, authorize the um, contracting of an, o -E, an OEA, um, OAE. OAE. The services of an owner's agent engineer. Owner's agent engineer. I, and I'm very curious about the definition of that. Um, and here's why, Mr. Chairman. Uh, when I assumed the uh, Committee on Rules prior to the beginning and, and throughout the first six months of this term, um, one of the um, issues that was brought to our attention was um, the need for uh, furnishings of this building. And one of the things that I found that was um, 
particularly alarming was that the way this building was designed resulted in the requirement of only a particular vendor who could, who could um, provide a particular type of furnishing to, um, to be able to uh, fit with the way the electrical was set up in, in certain parts of the building. And so one of the concerns I have is if we're going to be contracting this out and you're having a private party doing the design of the building, I'm just concerned that there may be instances where the design and the specifications will be drawn up in such a way that only a certain type of bidder can um, meet those specs. And then that could result in, in almost a structured bid. And so I wanted to, to ask about this owner's agent engineer. And I wanted to particularly ask DPW, do we, when we're doing these kind of projects, typically contract out these owner's agent engineers? So there's an eclipse, we can repeat your question, please. Does, because right now in section four, we're striking through the, the, the Department of Public Works and we're not going to be soliciting through DPW if we pass this. But if we were, would DPW contract with an owner's agent engineer? Is that typically what's done up at D DPW? Actually, we have engineers, as, as we speak today, that have done this for the past 20 or 30 years. We've also just picked up a, um, um, a PE uh, to help with our capital improvement projects uh, so that he may oversee the CIP uh, section of the DPW. So we, we, have, we have engineers at this point in, uh, in time where we don't need to outsource any additional engineers. So th this, this raises a concern for me, Mr. Chairman, because now we're going to be adding a new layer of cost by having the Department of Education contract with an owner's agent engineer when the Department of Public Works has the capabilities in-house. And on top of that, my concern of contracting of the owner's agent engineer is, as I previously stated, if this owner's agent engineer has certain industry knowledge that they're able to, unbeknownst perhaps to the agencies, right into the design and specifications, certain nuances that would tilt the projects towards certain bidders, um, we could result, that could result in us opening the door for a very structured um, bid package being put together that only a very select type of player can, can adhere to. And going back to section Going back to section two that we discussed, a responsive offer shall mean an offer that conforms in all material respect to the solicitation. So even if we have bidder B who um, is able to provide a certain type of flooring and they're able to do all the, the entire project at a much lower cost, if the flooring in the specification was something that bidder B was not able to provide because they don't have access to that particular vendor, it's an exclusive, it's an exclusive provider here and only one company is able to do it, then no matter how much less expensive that particular bid would be, because it's a material respect of the solicitation, we're going to have to go with that more expensive bidder. And so um, I, I do respect the amendment in that it's trying to make sure there's expertise involved in this process as opposed to the Department of Education that does not have these engineers. But I'm of the mind that if we're going to be requiring engineers, and we have them already, we shouldn't layer another cost onto it by having them contracted uh, for, the, for the purposes of the design, construction, management, financing, and renovation, if we already have it in DPW. So um, well, we'll, uh, yes. I think, Senator, I think one of the, one of the, uh, the emphasis with the superintendent was to ensure that he has the expertise and the flexibility to be able to use other resources within the government of Guam. So I don't know, if Mr. Fernandez, if you want to chime in, but if, in fact, the expertise is readily available within DPW, then that may be an option available to him. Otherwise, yeah, it would be a tool that would be available to him in terms of focusing on this one particular project. But, Mr. Leongro. Thank you. Uh, if I may, Senator. Um, during the RFP for uh, JFK, which we were protested, which was, which was protested at the same time, uh, most of the same engineers are still at DPW today. Uh, I mean, I, mean 
I will admit a lot of, you know, during the four occasions when the bid went out, you know, we had failed. It could have been administrative, it could have been for other reasons, it could have been for money, it could have been for greed, whatever it may have been. I know we were at fault, and I will be the first to admit it. Uh, as the senator earlier this morning had mentioned, he assumed that because uh, DOE has a, a much more vested interest in the building of Simon Sanchez than DPW does. I, I, I stand to correct him because we're, when we go out for any CIP projects, we treat it all the same. You know what I mean? They're, they're all important to us. You know. Unfortunately, again, I, I cannot speak for what had happened before. Mr. Leongro, I think I think the record already speaks for itself in regards to administrative errors, and it was highlighted by one of the previous speakers. So we can cut that conversation here, in in, in terms of vested interests, because when you have administrative errors involved in protests and validating that protest, I think that that conversation has to end. Okay. May I just? Okay. All right. So, okay, having, let, let me take that back then. So, yes, Senator, we, we do have the expertise. I think we do. Now, if in case this body decides, if this body decides to vote in favor of giving the procurement uh, authority to the Department of Education, by all means, we will be a team player. We will be that additional source of expertise that's needed in order for this to go, you know, to get done. So that I offer the superintendent, and that I offer DOE. Thank you, Mr. Leongor. Senator Sinekles, thank you very much. Uh, Senator Ada and then Speaker Cruz, I know you had your hands raised. Senator Ada. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to respond to the um, retiring speaker. Uh, first of all, the concern about uh, tailored solicitations, uh, I, 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 you know, I, I think that's a valid concern, but I, I also want to point out the fact that our procurement law does have the protest provisions to it. And because there's so much money at stake, you better believe that those other offerers out there are going to be looking at this real closely. And if they even for a minute think that a solicitation is tailored for one offerer, red flags are going to go up pretty quick. So um, uh, I, it's a valid concern, uh, but I'm, I'm not as, I guess I'm not as concerned about it. In terms of uh, that by hiring an owner's agent engineer, we are adding another layer of, of expenses. That is, that is correct, but GPA uses it, Port Authority of Guam uses it, Guam Water Works uses it, and the thinking is that the engine, even DPW uses it. All those contracts for the bridge reconstruction, the highways, is done by an owner's agent engineer, Parsons Brinkerhoff, whose sole purpose in life is to develop the solicitation documents for those contracts. And then the engineers that are resident to DPW or to GPA, they're the ones that are basically sustaining the other projects that have been completed using their technical expertise to be able to do that. So, once Simon Sanchez is finished, then DPW can, you know, whatever. But the owner's agent engineer is a necessary expense because if we don't hire that, who a DOE is going to take the time to take a look at the technical submissions that are being made? Thank you, Senator Ada. Uh, Mr. Fernandez would like to provide a direct response. Mr. Uh, Fernandez. I, I appreciate the suggestion, and I fully support uh, adding that language as an amendment. I, I think in the course of the hearings, we had you know, other um, uh, stakeholders provide testimony. I do believe uh, one of the potential bidders uh, on, you know, on any procurement suggested uh, things that I think are merit here in terms of breaking up the procurement and uh, allowing for solicitation of design and contract management, you know, uh, construction management and so forth. So I think I, I, I um, view your suggestion in along the lines of the construction management component as a representative of the ownership and I think that would be helpful because I am aware and I've spoken to other agency directors about moving our way through the solicitation and uh, when I spoke to John Benevente over GPA he said look this is, you know, this is what we do and it's been very helpful. And I think the, being able to hire an owner's agent has been um, uh, to a, a, a benefit to their solicitation. So I would appreciate that opportunity to explore that uh, aspect. Thank you very much, Mr. Fernandez. Speaker Cruz, you had your hands raised. 
I, I just wanted to also mention that even this building, for the building of this, we had an uh, agent that f oversaw it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Any other discussion on the proposed amendment? If not, Senator Sinicklis, you're recognized on the amendment. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. And just in light of what was just shared by the, the most previous speaker, we did have an agent that oversaw this building, and I had to cancel a furniture order that was $430,000 more than what we needed because part of the process that was involved in the building of this building included the ordering of furniture that was um, throughout the course of the process eventually designed in a way that was specific to a particular company. And the, um, there were other parties that were affected, but because the legislature was outside of the Guam procurement law, uh, it became a, a singular decision on my part, and we could have given out any kind of furniture order that we wanted to, but we opted to cancel that because it wasn't in the best interest of the people who wanted to spend that much money on furniture. The way this, th this is written is that the OAE will be doing all these designs, and, 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 and then once, once it becomes the official solicitation of the agency, then only the, resp the a responsive offer, offerer is only one who meets those material, those material sp uh, specifications. And so in the interest of trying to make sure that the department has the expertise to know what it's looking at, we may also be victimizing it on the flip side because that expert can be putting things in there that they're not able to catch that could cause the bid to be artificially more expensive than it has to be because a certain specification that, it, that the department accepted is only offered by a much higher price vendor than somebody who's offering something of a similar quality at a lower price. And so that's why I'm, I'm concerned about um, putting, uh, because of the actual past experience, I'm concerned about putting this huge $100 million plus project into this specification control of a single agent to design and to create all of the material respect to the solicitation because then basically you, you just find your, 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 your favorite vendor, you put in your own favorite little details that are going to make sure that the vendor gets it and you, set, you, set, you basically set it up. And the department, if they don't have the expertise to be doing the engineering on their own, they also don't have the expertise to be scrutinizing the work of the contracted engineer. And that's why, I mean, if we're going to do this, all right, but subsequent, Mr. Chairman, we're going to have to bring DPW back into the picture as a, not, not just as a, an optional team player, but as a, a gatekeeper of this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Senator Sinicus. On the amendment, to insert the phrase services of an owner's agent engineer on page four, line five after the word design, comma, and then insert that phrase. Any further discussion? No further discussion of, yes, Senator St. Augustine, no, you're recognized. Senator, Mr. Chairman, I think uh, Senator Tom, uh, that's supposed to be before the word design. If I'm correct, I'm, I'm just trying to follow the... Senator Adda, if you can clarify, because I was under the impression it was design, comma, then services of an owner's agent, engineer, comma. And I guess it really doesn't matter because yeah. it lists yeah. the services, and it says, or, so it lists, you know, service one, service two, or service three. So it doesn't matter about the order. Okay, so, so we're back with the amendment. Any objection? Mr. Chair. Senator Espaudon, on the amendment, please. Uh, well, just uh, in reference to the last comment by the previous speaker, when he references the word or, the word or appears after the word renovation and before the word construction. So I believe that the word or, uh, because of the commas, so, uh, so by syntax, really the word or only belongs to the phrase renovation or construction. And, so, and again, unless we put a comma after the word renovation, and then it would be or construction. And then the interpretation by the pre previous speaker will definitely be correct. But in my reading of it right now, in terms of syntax, uh, the word or refers only to renovation or construction. Okay, not, so not so an or uh, of all the previous uh, items. Thank you very much, Senator Espaudon. Uh, I will entertain that as your proposed amendment. And notwithstanding the uh, 
the body's decision. I'll have that supersede the amendment, Senator Adda. Senator Espaldon, do you, do you want to move for a comma right after the word renovation on line six so that it would address the concern that has been raised? You know, in, in essence, I believe that the previous speaker was correct, that it doesn't matter what the order is, but I just wanted to point out that the word or is not, does not reference all the other, does not reference design or the construction management or the financing or the renovation. It only references renovation or construction. But if a comma is inserted after the word renovation, then the overall application would be inclusive of the proposed amendment. Okay, I well, believe moving so. to the amendment by Senator Ada. It's still on the floor. Senator no. Sinoxing. Mr. Chairman, if you look at the definition of the service, owner's agent engineer covers everything here. So when you put it after the word design, or even after the comma renovation, or wherever you want to think you want to put it, it's got to be before all of this because that's what the agent does. He does the design. He makes the construction management. He, he, he takes care of the financing. He does all of that. So that's why I just wanted to make sure that it's put in the proper place. Otherwise, you want the agent to be there after design? Why, he, that's what he's supposed to be looking after, to making sure that whatever DOE does not have the expertise, he does. And, and, and I'm, only because I looked at the definition of what the owner... No, you're right, you're right, Senator Sanofsky, but, but going back to the conversation in terms of the placement, as long as it's all-inclusive, the or in that particular sentence, and it goes back to what Senator Spadon brought up. So rather than uh, moving forward with this, Senator Adam, I'm going to request your consideration to prepare this in writing. We will take a 10-minute recess. Thank you. <laughs>
Good afternoon, Senators. The Committee on the Whole is now reconvened. Uh, you all have a copy of the proposed amendment. Thank you for your patience. I believe uh, Senator Adda, the, the sponsor of the amendment, had to make some additional modification. So you have a copy of it before you, Senator Adda, if you want to uh, highlight it, and then we'll move for the vote. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Uh, in keeping with the spirit of 204, which is fundamentally to give the responsibility of constructing um, Simon Sanchez High School to the Department of Education, it's their school, then we need to give them the, the capability to be able to effectively formulate their procurement uh, for the services of uh, an architectural and engineering uh, service, A&E, uh, which will define what Simon Sanchez will look like, um, the services, the procurement of the services for construction management, uh, for financing services, and for the renovation and construction services and related services, whatever, I guess, related services is your catch-all. Um, but related to construction, construction management, etc., consistent with this chapter. Uh, so uh, nobody expects, uh, you know, DOE to have the technical. They they teach students. They don't build schools. So we allow them to be able. And then we took away. If you see on line one there, we we changed the word shall to may. So if they collaborate with DPW and DPW says, we got this, we can do it, then fine, do that. But if DOE decides that and they have the funding to do it, they should be able to hire this technical agent whose sole purpose in life is to go through those steps that will result in the construction of a new school. Thank you very much, Senator Adda. Uh, Senator Adda, just for clarification purposes, after and related services, that's a comma, and then to con continue with consistent with this chapter, correct? That's correct. Okay. Just for clarification purposes, Senators, colleagues, we have the amendment before us. Any further discussion? If not, uh, please be mindful that this only replaces the first paragraph, not sub-item one, sub-item two, and the rest of that particular section. So on Senator Adda's amendment, Vice Speaker Talai, you recognize. Thank you. I, I totally understand the intent of this amendment, and uh, I think in general to have the luxury of, of hiring, you know, a special consultant for all these different parts of procuring uh, construction of school and the design and the financing. You, you also added financing in in this substitute version of the bill. Um, I think it's great. I just think I'm still trying to figure out we're going to give all this capability to DOE for one school, for one project, when the, the rest of the entire government of Guam is relying on the Department of Public Works to do this for all of our projects. And if they are not able to do it for, for this, because they need this person, we didn't give them that. And um, we didn't give them you know, the ability to hire separate consultants if, if that's what if that's what we're saying is lacking, but if, you know, I read the transcript of what trans, trans, uh, the dis earlier discussion, and it's the, the previous procurements have nothing to do with this. This is not the problem that we're trying to solve. And I guess that's, it just goes back to, again, you know, the bill. I understand we want to do something. We want the procurement to go faster. We want, you know, DOE to be involved. We begged DOE to be involved. When we were doing Bill 58, we said, why aren't you, why don't you have your design? Why aren't you telling them exactly what you want? So it's great to hear today that now they're committing, that they're going to be very clear about what they want going forward. But actually they said they're gonna to have to consult with the students and do some other things now, you know, hire a, another consultant. I don't know, I'm just trying to figure out how we're getting faster at this process. It seems like, I still wanna know what is the issue and with DPW, what is, what is it that, um, well, it just doesn't seem like the engineering part of it was, was the issue. That's my only, that's my only point. I don't, I didn't, I don't remember seeing any complaint about the engineering. So, but, and they were able to, you know, use their engineers, I think, to, 
to build the other schools in conjunction with the, the contractors, right? So anyways, so I just wanted to register that. Mr. Chair, thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Vice Speaker. Is that a, uh, in opposition of the amendment? Okay. Uh, any other discussion on the proposed amendment? If not, there's been an objection on the amendment. Senator St. Nicholas, on the proposed amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So just to make it very clear, this amendment allows for the Department of Education to solicit for the services of an owner's agent engineer for the procurement of architectural and engineering services, which by the way, after the A&D apostrophe, that, that comma should actually be moved to the after the services, but I'm, I'm sure legal counsel will catch that. For the procurement of architectural engineering services, construction management services, financing services, renovation and construction services, and related services consistent with this chapter. What this amendment will do is, DOE can basically, in, in compliance with the Guam procurement law, go out and hire an OAE to, to write everything up, write up the entire solicitation. When they do that, if they do that, and the solicitation moves forward, again, I take us back to section two, a responsive offer shall mean an offer that conforms at bid opening in all material respects to the solicitation. So whatever this o OAE writes up, that's gonna determine who, who conforms on a, uh, with material, in all material respects. And so if they write in very specific requirements or very specific specifications, very narrow specifications, they could preclude responsive offers by virtue of what they write into the solicitation. And I take it back, Mr. Chairman, to what I said earlier about how if the department does not have, I agree with the, the move of the amendment, the department's job is to teach our kids. And if the department does not have the expertise to draft up its own solicitation, how do they have the expertise to critique one and to make sure that what's contained in that solicitation is not only going to meet their needs, but is also not going to be drafted in a way that's going to narrow the offers they can consider to the point where they're being left with only options that are not as competitively priced or not as adequately provisioned, but do, on a very narrow basis, conform to a responsive offer. We could be trapping the department into accepting something that they have no choice but to accept because it was part of the solicitation that they contracted out with an OAE and didn't catch. And then all of a sudden they get put with a design that they have to agree with, regardless of cost, regardless of practicality, because that was a narrow element of an overall solicitation. Everybody else just, get, just gets kicked out. And then we can find ourselves right back here in this situation where we have all these other companies protesting saying, I offered 20% less and this guy is just offering a different color curtain. And then the guy's gonna turn around and say, well, the solicitation said specifically, you know, mahogany, European mahogany colored curtain. And I'm, I'm the only one of the European mahogany colored curtain. You, you may have mahogany, but I'm European mahogany. It gets like that, Mr. Chairman. That, that's what ties these things up in protests. And then all of a sudden, will the department be forced to accept a bid that's 20% higher because somebody wrote into their solicitation a very specific color curtain? That's what can happen here. And I don't think that this is a, a safe route to take. And I'm speaking on prior experience. I'm speaking an actual experience of what happened here. If you go up to the second floor, Mr. Speaker, and some of our, 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 our colleagues here can tell you the wiring is so impractical up there because it was wired specifically for a vendor that was charging us $430,000 in furniture. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not comfortable at all with, um, with this course. I do agree with the move of the amendment. If DOE is going to be the one doing this, they do need the expertise, but that's why I think DPW really needs to be the one handling the solicitation. There's a reason why we don't turn all these things over to a single entity to make up all the requirements, because all that expertise, if, if the people of Guam aren't the ones controlling what's going into it, the people of Guam are the ones who are going to be suffering the, the details at the end of the, at the, end of the, uh, 
at the end of the day. So, yeah, I, I join in the previous speaker's objection to the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Senator Sir Nicholas. I think we need to also be very mindful that uh, DPW had this process for the last five, six years. And unfortunately, it has not worked to the benefit of constructing a Simon Sanchez High School. So we are exploring other options. And one way that we can help reinforce this entire process is if, in fact, we give GDOE, the superintendent, the tools necessary to ensure that he's able to see this process through. So I just wanted to add that particular comment. On the proposed amendment, there's been an expression of a couple of objections. All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Senator? Uh, Senator Ada, you wanted to close on your amendment? Yes, you may close. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to make um, uh, three comments. First of all, uh, a, a remark was made that uh, what, we're, what we have here by providing, um, g giving DOE the, the, um, the uh, authority to be able to go out and hire the services of an OAE uh, to do all these things uh, is, is a, I guess a, it was described as a special advantage to DOE while the rest of the government depends on DPW. And I think that's where a lot of the problem begins because they are spread out so thin that they, they can't focus in on, on Simon Sanchez. And that's what we want to do. Hire somebody that their sole purpose in life is Simon Sanchez High School. The second thing is that how do we know that the OAE's recommendation, recommendation is not selling us a, you know, a barrel of snake oil? And that's where then the selection committee and DPW, who has these engineers, can take a look at it and GITA from the standpoint of the financing end of it or whatever. But that's where the selection committee sits down and takes a look at these things and say, do we really need European mahogany or will just mahogany at, you know, um, at the least cost be sufficient? So, so it's, it's a valid argument. Uh, how are we going to evaluate that, that uh, he's not just selling us a bill of goods in his interest? Well, because we have, still have DPW and other people to take a look at it. Proposal, proposed procurement, uh, I think, though, that the, uh, w the previous speaker uh, brings up a good point that, it, that from the language, it seems that once the OAE puts the documents together, you know, whatever he puts together, that's it. And we probably should put a qualifying language in the end that says, proposed procurement shall be subject to the review and approval of the DOE superintendent. So until it passes through the superintendent, this thing doesn't pass go. And that, I think, is, you know, kind of kind of make sure it's, a, it's, a, it's another way, it's an indirect way of saying, OAE, you work for the superintendent. So um, I, I would make that amendment to this amendment to add at the end of that, uh, after it says cons the last line, consistent with this chapter, period, and then add the language, proposed procurement shall be subject to the review and approval of the DOE superintendent. Okay, that, Senators, please. there's an amendment, proposed amendment to the amendment to insert right after the word chapter. The proposed procurement shall be subject to the review and approval of DOE superintendent. On the amendment to the primary amendment, any objection? Hang on, Mr. S uh, Mr. Chair, if I may, again, we can't make that discernment until we actually have a chance to see how it, how it folds into all of the, all of the paragraphs. So I, I believe that it's just a moment to read it and then to fathom really any effects it might have. If you just give us an extra 30 seconds, then uh, I, I believe that... Okay, two-minute recess.
We are still in break, Senators, but I just want to make sure that everyone's on the same page with the verbiage. It shall be inserted right after the word chapter. The proposed procurement shall be subject to the review and approval of DOE, Superintendent. We're still in break.
Good afternoon, Senators. The Committee in the Whole is now back in session. Senator Ada, you're still recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I re uh, request to withdraw uh, the amendment uh, that that's on the floor. Both. Both the amendment to the amendment and the primary amendment, correct? That's, that's correct. And okay. then I have uh, distributed the new amendment. Okay. On Senator, Senator Anders withdrawing his amendment to his primary amendment and also inclusive of his primary amendment. So now he has another version that he's proffering. Senator Adder, you're recognized on your amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So the new uh, floor amendment, uh, the change is that um, now we have on line 11, it should read at the end there, any proposed procurement by the owner's agent engineer shall be subject to the review and approval of the Guam Department of Education superintendent. So this makes it very clear that the submittals uh, of the OAE must pass through the, DO, uh, the superintendent before it actually gets put out for solicitation. Thank you very much, Senator Ada. Senators, on the Ada amendment to replace the first paragraph on page four, Section 4, any further discussion? Vice Speaker Talai, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just, I'm, I'm just not sure that using these words that uh, the proposed procurement by the owner's agent engineer, that now we are empowering the engineer, that we're going, the DOE is going to hire an engineer, and the engineer is now going to procure these things for the government of Guam. We have a whole process set up in the rest of the bill that talks about, you know, the procurement, and it's being done by the committee, headed by the Department of Education, by the government of Guam, not by that engineer. And so even the first reference to, um, for the services of an owner's in agent engineer for the procurement of architectural and engineer services, I think what, what we're intending is, or the um, sponsor's intending is that this be a consultant, correct? Yes, so I just don't think we're supposed to be giving them any procurement authority. That's, that's really gonna create problems, I think. Thank you, Senator Talahi. Senator Ada, any comments on that? No? Okay. On the amendment, is that an objection, Senator Talahi, to the amendment? On the ADA amendment, Senators, there's been a, Vice Speaker Talai, is that an objection? Yes, I'm objecting because I think you're creating legal problems with this language and if, unless you're gonna run it through, you know, somebody else. But yes, I object because I think that's blatantly a delegation of procurement authority to some engineer that, that's totally different than what this bill was intending to do and, it, and different from the public hearings that we had. Thank you very much, Vice Speaker Talayu. There's been an expression of objection. Any final comments, Senator Adda? I, I just, I just want to point out that on line four, it makes it very clear that the solicitation will be in compliance with the Guam procurement law. So we're not, we're not uh, sidestepping any, you know, um, any rules of procedure. Thank you, Senator Adda. Any further comments? Senator St. Nicholas on the proposed amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just in, in light of the, of the discussion between the two previous speakers, I think it's important for us to really <clears throat> look carefully at what the overall amendment and the amendment to the amendment do in conjunction with each other. It starts with the Guam Department of Education may solicit in compliance with the Guam procurement law for the services of an owner's agent engineer for the procurement of architectural and engineering services, construction management services, financing services, renovation and construction services and related services, consistent with this chapter, any proposed procurement by the owner's agent engineer shall be subject to the review and approval of the Guam Department of Education superintendent. The way I'm reading the first section as it relates to the amendment to the amendment is, Guam procurement law applies to Guam DOE soliciting the OAE, but after that, it's the OAE that does the procurement of all those other things. And from what, I, and then after that, the OAE does the procurement, which is, I, I'm assuming is the solicitation. 
after the, the, the OAE drafts up the solicitation for all those other things, then the Guam Department of Education superintendent has to review and approve what that OAE drafts up in that solicitation, which is, I guess, what the, the way the word procurement is being used here. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, but two points. First point is, I don't know if the way this is drafted, Guam procurement law applies to the job that would be assigned to the OAE. And two, with the way the word procurement is being used here, I do wonder whether or not there is going to be actual proc procuring by the OAE, or is the OAE just drafting drafting up what will what, what should be the um, solicitation the solicitation to conform with what is going to be put forward in section two a point of information yes senator Adam. yeah mr. mr. chairman on line five there, the word procurement was put on there at the advice of legal counsel because there was too many solicit and solicitation, so he wanted to kind of differentiate that. But initially, we had the language we had in there was uh, the services of an owner, agent, engineer for the solicitation of services. Um, and then, of course, when you actually issue out that solicitation, it, you know, for the procurement of it, then... Uh, the, uh, the, the superintendent's going to have to approve it and it's going to have to go out on his signature. So procurement, solicitation, tomato, tomato. Thank you, Senator Adda. There's been an expression of objection on the proposed amendment. Senator Espardon, on the proposed amendment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I, I, there's some good points being made in terms of the whole procurement issue. Uh, if we take a look at line five, and it reads, for the services, in compliance with Guam procurement law, for the services and the owner's agent engineer, perhaps if we insert the words, to assist GDOE in the procurement of architectural and engineering. So that way, again, it'll be basically in, in an assisted manner in the procurement for GDOE. GOD will be assisted by their owner agent to make sure that, you know, all all the technical specs uh, can be met um, by the services that are going to be needed for the complete construction of Simon Sanchez. So I would like to make an amendment at this point at, on line five after the OAE in parentheses to insert the words to assist GDOE in and then strike the, the next word for. So it will be uh, owner's agent engineer to assist GDOE in the procurement of architectural and engineering services, et cetera. Thank you, Senator Espardon. On the amendment to the amendment, any discussion, any objection? No objection is order. Thank you, Senator Espardon. On the amendment as amended, any further discussion? Senator St. Nicholas? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. With respect to that amendment to the amendment that just passed, that would now cause us to require a change on lines 11 to 13. Since the OAE will be assisting in the procurement, Senator S S S Nicholas, do you have any amendment? Perhaps the the language on lines eleven to thirteen is no longer necessary. So, if we could just strike it from this amendment. There's a uh, motion to delete lines eleven. 13 beginning with any proposed procurement by Senator St. Nicholas. Any discussion? Senator Adda? Any objection? No objections? So ordered. On the primary amendment as amended, there's still an expression of objection? Okay. There's still objection. Yes, Vice Speaker to life. Yes, I'm just um, wondering, maybe DPW can help us answer this question. If, if DOE is going to hire its own OAE 
and, and uh, as a consultant in, to assist it in the procurement of all these other things, including the engineering services, construction management services. Does DPW have a role on this committee? Besides just voting? <laughs> We're awaiting our instructions after this. I'm not sure w what our role will be other than assisting uh, the superintendent in uh, whatever he needs, whatever resources in order for him to make sure that we assist the OA OAE, the, D uh, the DOE, and what, are, uh, what other entities there are that may be necessary to get Simon Sanchez built. And how much do you think this is going, this, this part, just procuring the owner's agent engineer adds to the project or takes away from actual construction dollars? What would that be? I'm sorry, what was your question again? How much, does, how much would it cost to procure this owner's agent engineer? I'm, I'm guessing that DPW acted as the owner's agent throughout the, all our, our other procurements. So what, what would it cost uh, DOE? Because that's the amount of money that's going to be taken away from what's put into Simon Sanchez construction. What do you estimate? Yeah. Is it substantial or not? Mm -hmm. um, I, I would guess maybe a million, maybe 1.5. That, that, that's just a guess, that's just a rough estimation. But, but you know, we, we can also help. DPW will always be there. We can, we can also do the CM ourselves. We don't need to have this individual take full control of the project. We could, we could, help, we could, help, the, we could help GDOE by providing that. We have a quality control uh, group that can go out and make sure that as there's progress, progress within the construction of the new Simon Sanchez, that we would be there to make sure that they follow all the uh, specs that are required in the drawings. So I'm just saying that, that maybe we're giving this individual maybe a little more leeway than he should have, a little more responsibility than uh, he should have. Maybe I'm saying that we can save the government of Guam some money by getting DPW a little bit more involved. Uh, should, the, should this body decide to give the uh, procurement authority to GDOE? Uh, you, you know, we had made four previous mistakes, but we are still there and we're still a government agency and we have mandates that, that we have to stick by and we have to make sure that these, that we go out and perform whatever's asked of us to mitigate these mandates, to act on these mandates. And one of the mandates would be to uh, provide engineering assistance to whomever, whichever uh, GovGuam entity may need it. We've done it before and we will continue doing it. So I'm just thinking out loud, you know, that maybe we should just limit uh, this uh, um, OAE, it's responsibilities, you know, but not take him out of the picture completely, but I mean, there's nothing wrong with, with DPW doing the CM, you know, nothing wrong with that at all. Thank you, Mr. Leongro. Thank you, Madam Vice Speaker. There's been an expression of objection to the proposed amendment on the ADA amendment. Senator Espaldon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, along the same line, since uh, Mr. Leongro said a couple things, I need to ask you, Mr. Leon Guerrero, so you're saying that DPW could play an instrumental role in the construction management services, right? So, and of course, this, the way this, this amendment is written, it's uh, discretionary upon DOE whether they actually solicit uh, an OAE um, and maybe even limit. And I'm not sure the language really permits them to limit it. I mean, I think the discretion is whether they should hire one or not. Uh, but not necessary limit. And I, I guess that's where I need to take at least a moment to really take a look at the wording again of this, of whether if we do pass this, even though Department of Education has the discretion to be able to hire an OAE, if they do decide to hire an OAE, does that then mean that they now, that that OAE has all these potential, uh, this, the whole, all, all these potential areas of the construction of Simon Sanchez, which includes the A&E services, the construction management services, financing services, renovation or not. Uh, 
I guess that becomes the question. Because if DOE decides to hire an OAE, the OAE, or could this, could this uh, amendment be interpreted to say that even the construction management is now out of the hands of, of public works and the OAE now is totally responsible for that aspect? And I think that's an area to consider. Mr. Superintendent, it seems like you might want to have something to say. Thank you, Senator Espadon. I believe the superintendent would like to provide some comments. Sure. Uh, I, I, I understand what you're saying. I think the way the, if I'm following the amendment right, uh, the language reads, may solicit um, in compliance with one procurement law for the, for the various services of, an, of the OAE. I think that what was critical to, the, to, this, uh, to this amendment is the, word that, the words that were um, substituted to assist in the procurement. So there is, um, I think this provides sufficient leeway for uh, GDOE in determining the, the scope of work under such solicitation to determine how best an OAE will assist these projects. It could be zero assistance uh, in some cases. Let me ask, let me also make a comment on the construction management and so forth. I appreciate the DPW uh, discussing this. Uh, you know, I don't think there's anything that would preclude us from working with DPW to provide some of these services. I would, however, want to emphasize that if that is the case, that it not be assumed that DPW is going to be able to, to fund this out of its appropriation. In the discussions that we've had with DPW, there's always been this question about whether we can utilize funding for, to support that, that role. And especially in the, with these budget cuts, I would, uh, if, if we were going to work with DPW for these particular services, I would want to make sure there is sufficient financial support to support DPW's role and not ask them as they are spread thin already to absorb that major function as well. I appreciate that. However, it would seem to me that if DPW was not going to be funded uh, for any construction management services, that then the responsibility falls upon the OAE, in which you would still have to fund them. Correct. That's what I'm saying is that right now what we're contemplating is the OAE perhaps, perhaps providing assistance in these various areas, and this is, a, again, it's discretionary, it has to, may solicit uh, for, for their assistance. Uh, we're, if we were to work with DPW, I mean, my question to them would be, what services can you provide that would limit the, the, the reliance on an OAE? And number two, do you have the resources so that we can ensure that we're not uh, simply locking ourselves into uh, trying to spread ourselves thin? As you, know, as you know, we work with DPW collaboratively on buses, I know they've got a lot of road work out there. I think by setting this requirement on DPW, I would want to make sure that, it, that we're all supportive of their efforts as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Egan, you recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you know, the, the crux of bill number 204-34 is to look at the possibility of transferring the procurement authority with regards to the solicitation and the construction of a brand new Simon Sanchez High School. We've already extensively discussed the history over the course of the last four or five years. And if this is a tool that is gonna reinforce the support that is gonna be given to the superintendent of education and set him up for success so that the student population, we don't have a hearing at Simon Sanchez High School where students who graduated two years prior said, new leaders committed. The legislature committed that a brand new school was gonna be constructed and yet we're still at, at ground zero. That's what we are discussing. This whole idea about trying to, and, and it's a good conversation, but if this is a tool, as mentioned by the former chair of DPW, our senator colleague from Manila, this is a tool that would reinforce the support that the DOE superintendent would need to ensure that we realize a groundbreaking ceremony as well as a ribbon cutting ceremony. We don't even have to reinvent the wheel, so to speak. We have autonomous agencies out there, whether it's GPA, GWA, and some other autonomous agencies that have control of their procurement process, and they have an OAE. Mr. Speaker, and so far, there haven't been many issues brought up with their procurement process. So if we are gonna ultimately support this initiative, 
And I'm just saying, if we are collectively as a body, body, we need to give the superintendent the tools and the resources and the flexibility necessary so he can get this job done. Because we cannot allow these students to continue to be educated in that facility in, if I can remind everyone, that in 2008, I believe, or 2000, somewhere around 2008 and 2009, that Simon Sanchez High School was closed for a couple weeks because of the safety and the health and the sanitary condition of that school. And if any of us has been to that school recently and have listened to the students, I was there two weeks ago, Mr. Speaker, and that was the biggest issue that the students shared with me in, in discussing some of the concerns that they have. So it's either we leave the procurement process that where it is, encounter similar complications, because we just heard from the superintendent that seven out of his eight procurement personnel, or personnel that deal directly with procurement, have completed their four modules of, of on the procurement process, which is required by law. So he has taken the initiative to ensure that some of his personnel are properly trained and they comply with the law. I have every confidence, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chair, that the superintendent of education will take this process if, in fact, this body collectively decides to give it to DOE, that this superintendent will take this process and run with it and try to ensure that every single T's are crossed and every single I's are dotted so that, in fact, there's no protest and they can proceed with the construction of the brand new school. That's the objective. That's the intent, is to make sure that at least we give him that opportunity. And one of the comments that I shared, Mr. Speaker, with a member of this body is, guess what? Who has to report to the students, the faculty, the staff, and the school administrators at Simon Sanchez High School who has the greater interest in seeing that school reconstructed and rebuilt than the superintendent of education? He visits the schools, the 31, 35 schools, on a regular basis. I'm sure that during this entire school year, the superintendent had an opportunity to visit Simon Sanchez High School maybe three or four times, if not more. He's the one that has to respond to all these questions. So why would the superintendent not only apply the procurement laws, rules, and regulations, why would he not also want the resources and the authority necessary to do it right the first time? And that's what this initiative, Bill 204, that's 34, is all about. If we're gonna support this initiative, then let's support it. And yes, I like the dialogue, but this idea about questioning the superintendent, I have absolutely no question in his abilities to be able to run and facilitate this process if in fact we're given to we give it to him. And let me close with this, Mr. Speaker, because yes, it's I support the initiative. I support the initiative, but there's one statement that the superintendent mentioned on December 5th during your first public hearing. And he said, if this procurement process for Simon Simons High School is gonna move forward and you're gonna give me the authority or GDOE the authority, give me the flexibility so I can do it right the first time. That is part of his testimony. So I'm asking everyone in this hallway, let's listen to the students, let's listen to the school population, let's provide the superintendent with the flexibility in compliance with the procurement laws, rules and regulations, Mr. Speaker, and I believe that incorporating the owner's agent engineer with the additional amendments on this amendment to ensure that he or she or the firm assist the superintendent will provide that additional tool so that with some semblance of certainty, he can proceed with the process. So I ask and I encourage our colleagues to support this amendment because it would reinforce the flexibility that the superintendent is requesting. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Senator. There's been, uh, there's been an objection to the uh, amendment. To all those in favor of the amendment, please indicate by raising your hand. Motion passes. 
The time is now quarter to five. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I, Mr. Chair, if I may. I do have an amendment that I'd like to proffer, and I'd like to proffer before we recess because it was contingent upon my vote. I voted for this most recent amendment, but it's contingent upon the passage of this subsequent amendment. And I didn't want to proffer it at the time was because we've already entertained previous amendments to the amendment, and I wanted to kind of put this forward as a conditional, um, as conditional to my vote. Otherwise, I'm going to make a motion for reconsideration. Has it been circulated? It's written. It hasn't been circulated. I can, I can read it. And if members need a circulated copy, then I can so circulate. Let's, let's get, it, get it published. I mean, printed. Let's uh, break until tomorrow morning at 9.